Hey everybody, it's Fat Man from the Holler. I want to show you how to modify the solar charge controller on the Harbor Freight 100 watt Thunderbolt kit. And as you can see, before anything was done to this, it had an inline fuse which was hard wired, was hard soldered in. So initially, what had to transpire was I needed to put an inline fuse in it, and to do so, you have to add solder to remove solder anybody that does electronics will have a good understanding of it and i mean that's doing it with makeshift tools i mean if you have some electronics tools you can actually suck the solder out which is more proficient way of doing it but i have what i have and as you look it's a solar charge controller you can see down in there where it's been re-soldered on both sides where the fuse used to be which is in this area right here and what we did is soldered it in, put an inline fuse so if the fuse pops, it can be fixed. Obviously, a lot of places probably wouldn't be very happy of seeing that. And you cut a little notch in the top, and as you see right here, it goes right back together just like so. And then all you do have all you have to do is flip it over and put your screws in the direct in the board exactly where they go and I wouldn't recommend doing like I do using a drill I'm just use the drill out of necessity because it's fast and that's just what it is and you and I mean most it's not the greatest idea doing it this way so I recommend using a screwdriver of a better sort it just I do this because it's a little bit faster for me and it's relatively kind of hot today and I've had a heat stroke so I do things a little bit different than most people I'm just going to show you the basics of reassembling it which isn't very difficult instead of being stranded and stuck with no electric in a certain situation you just cut that notch and do it and add solder and that's about it and then the, here's the board here's what it looks like this right here slides down and there you go you need to change your fuse your fuse pops if you run the power inverter what have you very simple you can pull it right on out fuse is good stick it back in got a little cover it's a simple thing people use for car audio for years inline fuse and then you put it back together you just add the backing plate which is a protective cover and then you stick your screws in it, in the corresponding spots you screw it down very simple and this modification almost anybody can do it I mean we did it with makeshift tools because I don't have professional tools to where you can actually when you're doing solder they have equipment to where you can actually suck the solder out because all you do is you heat it up and it's like a little vacuum it's a tool i don't really know much about because i don't do a whole lot of electronics no more and plus i've had as i said a heat stroke so i've had a little bit of amnesia along the way but it doesn't stop me from being a dy guy it does affect my memory some days but as i said when you're doing this be very careful that you don't do injure the circuit board because when you're putting metal screws in in an application like this it's not going to be really a, a situation of a problem but it's something i learned many years ago when i used to build computers and put sound cards and such in computers you have to be careful that you do not touch a metal screw on metal because you can fry the whole board but it doesn't pertain to this. But it's an idea that I could show you in a different video if I ever get back to the computers. But here it is. And here's where your LED lights work. And here's your cycle duty. And then if you look right here, it shows you can add solar panels to the connection right here. And then the thing is, when you buy the kit, it does not come... You buy the 100 watt thunderbolt kit it does not come with a battery it comes with this little charge controller 
two LED lights and four panels that are 25 watts each which makes it 100 watts but as you can see here's where you hook your battery for positive and negative and then right here you can hook an external light up to right here and you can hook more panels to right here and then when you're hooking your panels up you have a piece of hardware that splits into four it goes it has a cable that comes off here and then it goes four out and then you can plug each panel in and then far as your usbs you want to charge some of the usb you can hook it right here and if you run a power inverter you can run it once you have the battery cable hooked to the solar charge controller and here is the display screen and a little bit of food for thought as well sometimes when you have problems with this particular solar charge control unit it will say e11 and if you read the entire book which i don't read all of it i kind of jump right into doing things because i'm not over analytical i'm more of simplified terms but here's the basis when you see this and it says e11 what e11 represents is you have a battery that is under charge you have a battery that's so low it will not charge in the system and you can also go to harbor freight and buy a smaller panel which i have bought and that's my batteries get too low because my solar panels is having a problem i use a smaller panel that costs it's like 50 bucks at harbor freight and it will charge the battery up enough to use the solar panels to come with the kit and i'm going to make another video and i'm going to show you guys what happened in a review of having the four panels on my roof for roughly about a year and a half and it was not very good we can speed up the we can speed up the guessing game either a piece of hail hit one of the panels just right and cracked it or the second option the sun because the sun is pretty intense here in missouri because it actually gets hot enough the sun will actually it actually breaks windows but I'll, I'll do some follow-ups and if you guys are interested in the kit i would on a review on a scale of one to ten depending on the application if it's for a, a hunting shed or a camping camping application or something small it's going to be very great but far as powering your whole house it's not going to run your refrigerator your oven your dryer or your 220 on your hot water heater and i mean you can get a lot out of it but the trick to getting a lot out of a smaller system is have some good battery banks and i'd recommend having oh you could have four to four to eight batteries i wouldn't say i would go crazy with it i have three i wouldn't use much more than four and if you have four you can run a power inverter off of it and then when it breaks down into amp hours and it breaks down into increments, I believe the battery's like, I believe it's 25 to 35 AH, which is your amp hours, and it breaks down to kilowatts and such. But anyway, if you guys like the video, like and subscribe. I'm just here to show you guys a way to modify the solar charge controller. And everybody have a blessed weekend and enjoy your summer and try to stay cool. And do a little DY and have a, some fun and laughs. And that is all. Thank you for the views.